do some more nice tricks like four crossing four patterns. There's four with something kind of missing, like. <laughs>
each one is. Okay. So we try to adopt notation for that. Any other ideas? Any harmonic motion? Say again? Like it could be a harmonic motion with some some essence of probability theory. You know, there's a harmonic motion. There's a back and forth. It's certainly, that's certainly descriptive. But would that tell somebody how to juggle? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, that feels kind of like there's a back and forth going on. What about a sequence of times of things in the room or whatever? Right, so at any, at any point in time, uh, a hand is throwing something. Or at least a hand is throwing something and you wiggle a bit. The next hand throws something. The next hand throws something. Like that. And so you can try to keep track of well, what's being thrown at any given time. And so when I was thinking about this in my office, how could I describe juggling patterns? I just ignored what people have done before. I said, well, pretty much you sort of, at any given time, you're throwing one of these balls. And Mo was kind enough to bring three different colors of balls. Uh, they're green, blue, and yellow, more or less. And so we can try to uh, sort of say, that's not our idea. We can say uh, where, uh, which ball is thrown. At any given time. And for time in quotes here, because I don't really know what time means, uh, so we better define what that means. And so we'll take time to be uh, time one is when the first ball is thrown, time two is when the second ball is thrown. It's a discrete kind of a time, it's whenever you're throwing a ball. Okay? And so this is when balls are thrown. Only. And so if you like to think about it, you can think of the time as in the, the integers or the natural numbers or something like that, just to make it feel more mathy, put some notation there. But basically, at any given instant, one hand is doing something, and we can try to track this. So let's for this one, let's see, if I start now, yellow, green, blue, yellow, green, blue, yellow, green, blue. So that would kind of tell me how to do this pattern. Okay. So for example, you can think of this as first we throw the yellow ball. Then we throw the green ball, then we throw the blue ball, and if you slow it down enough, you can really see it. Can everyone see that? The way of describing this? Yellow, green, blue, yellow, green, blue. And it goes on forever, right? So you want to stop at some point. Okay. And you probably want to stop at some point where it starts repeating. Notice the yellow, green, blue just keeps, keeps repeating here. And in Moe's to stop, actually, you might think this is a bit of a lie, because when you start, uh, this sort of you start with two balls in one hand, right? And then you start to do your throwing. So yellow, green, blue. And so that two balls in one hand is kind of a little bit weird. So we're going to sort of just ignore that there are two balls in one hand. Not that we really notice it here, but sort of think of what's happening forever. Okay. So this is one way of describing uh, the three ball cascade. Okay. So this is the uh, three ball cascade, which is, this is the standard juggling pattern. So we'll say I juggle, we usually mean I juggle the three ball cascade, I juggle this pattern. Okay. So uh, there are other ways of describing this. If you really want to know what hand is doing what, kind of a fun way to do it, uh, you'll notice that you have to start with one hand. So let's sort of stick with the convention, so I'm right-handed. You start with the right hand, and the left, and the right, and the left. Okay. So this is one way to say it in terms of timing. Another way, uh, for those of you who've taken some juggling paper, you'll see there's some dots there on your paper, okay, is in terms of the hands. Uh, through time. I don't know if this is the technical uh, name for this. Uh, I'm over then this talk, so it says it this way. But you can imagine here, if you're standing here, uh, and you have two hands, so this is you, a uh, rough rendition of you. Okay. And you're juggling, and this is one hand, and then sometime, which we're going to denote as going down, uh, your other hand is going to throw. First, throw the right hand, then throw the left hand. Throw the right hand, throw the left hand, so this is the right hand. This is the left hand, the right hand, the left hand, the right hand, the left hand. It keeps going on sort of for all time. And at every point, you're going to throw one of these balls. And you can ask, well, when I throw it, when is it going to land in the other hand? Okay. So let's try to sort of analyze what happens here. I throw the yellow ball. So here the yellow ball is sitting here in my hand. And I throw it. And when you throw it the first time, uh, when does it land? It lands. Well, it doesn't land the next beat because yellow, green, blue, yellow, 
Here we're throwing the green ball. Here we're throwing the blue ball. And so it has to land sometime after that. But where does it land? Well, it lands when the next yellow ball is thrown. Yellow, green, blue. So actually, that's the throw in terms of time. Aren't you like holding it onto it for one beat before it's throwing it? Yeah, so this is, I put time in quotes. There are a couple of reasons I did that. One is that time is the instant it's thrown. It's also the instant that it's caught. That's obviously not an instant, right? And so it's sort of like the bundle of time around when that hand gets the ball and throws it. And so it's really not completely precise. So it's between, it's between when the previous ball was caught and the next one launches. That's right. Yeah, sort of, it's all the action in that hand. So it gets the ball and throws it. Gets the ball and throws it. Yep. And so you can sort of think of this yellow ball as waiting one, two, three beats to land. And as you can see that here, this yellow ball is waiting three beats to land. You can do the same thing for the green ball. The green ball uh, is thrown. It doesn't land in this hand because the blue ball is being thrown from there. It doesn't land in this hand. The yellow ball is there. It actually lands in the opposite hand three beats later. And as you struggle, you can see the yellow is thrown, wait, one, two, three. One, two, uh, I can't count it. Maybe. Can you count it up? I can't count all the way through. So you can really see that it's three beats later, even though it also happening at once. And then the blue ball is doing the same thing. The blue ball also waits three beats, come down in the opposite hand, and you continue this pattern. I didn't draw it small enough, but on your paper, you've got plenty of space. And so the yellow ball is now, again, going to come down three beats later. And so you can sort of imagine this pattern as throwing each ball in a way that it lands three beats later. Another way to see this is you can sort of imagine that every other throw is with your right hand. So it's right, left, right, left, right, left. You're sort of pulling these apart. So the, if I put the sort of yellow, green, blue, yellow, green, blue is going down here. So if you pull all the greens, every other thing down, you'll see it goes yellow, green, blue, yellow, green, blue, yellow, green, blue, and so on. You get that picture. Does that make sense to people? So that's another way that you can represent this pattern, and it keeps going, right? So you've got a lot of space and you've got the dot. So uh, the standard way, not that there necessarily is a standard way, but lots of different ways of doing it, but the de facto standard uh, through time uh, for dis discussing uh, juggling patterns is just in terms of the timing of the throws. So actually when you throw the ball, the important thing to remember is once you let it go, it's out of your hands. It's in the air, it's flying, it's going to come down whenever it feels like it based on when you threw it. And so when you throw it, the thing you really need to know is how hard you throw it. That's going to determine when it comes down to it. Okay. And so to describe the throw, I could say that this throw ends up three beats later in that hand, or I just threw it three high. And then for it to come down three beats later, it has to be in this hand. And I know exactly what it's going to come down. And that's sort of more descriptive in terms of how you juggle, because you know how hard to throw. So maybe I'll, I'll do that over here. Would it perhaps make sense to slide the table of the de the table with the chairs over somewhat so that people can go between the lamps? Like, people mean? Uh, you. Like, you keep hanging around with that, that yeah. one ceiling light. I'm just staying out of the way of one hand. I'm not even like You can move around. No, I don't need okay. 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 So the last notation is called site swap notation. And the site swap notation just focuses on the timing of what's happening. So what it says is that every ball, I'm just going to keep track of, if I know where the balls start, because that's how I start with my hands, I'm going to keep track of how much later the ball comes down, how far do you throw. So you could translate from all these colors here, if you didn't know what colors the balls were, you could try to fill it in by just, uh, so this just keeps track of the timing.
And so uh, this gives us three different ways of talking about standard juggling. Okay? You can think about as you color your balls in a particular way, when they land in each hand, or where they're thrown the next time, as soon as it lands, you throw it. Okay? Or you can think about where they are in terms of this sort of hands notation. Or you can think of it just in terms of the timing, and this is the most compact notation. So I won't say that it's preferable, but I will say that it's standard. So when I learned this, uh, I've gone to several different juggling talks, and people, I know certain jugglers, and they always talk in sort of the, this language that, oh, can you do three, can you do four, four, one, can you do three, one, four, one, six, whatever it is, and it's just like completely incomprehensible, unless you work out exactly what you're doing with your hands until you get used to it. Okay, so the purpose of this talk is sort of getting used to different ways of talking about it, so that's the standard juggling pattern. So most of you who raise your hand, you say you can juggle, you juggle three. Are any questions? If you juggle three, one, four, one, six, does that mean you're juggling flies? Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. That's a great, it's a great example. Okay, any other questions? Okay, how many people in the audience know a juggling pattern other than three? One. Four. One. I like one. One. Do you do one for us now? <laughs> That's one. The two-handed version of one. <laughs> so while we're at it, since, since you're doing demos, can you do two? That's two. So you'll notice that when Mo does two, two, which is two, 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 throwing every ball with height two, okay. the balls always come back to the same hand. Oh, she's doing two also. <laughs> so the convention actually is kind of funny. Throwing two when you're not doing anything else is okay, but throwing two with other throws is very hard to get the timing right because two has to come right back down, uh, and, and it's sort of hard to hard to do it. And so when people talk about two, they actually usually just hold the ball in their hand and they just move it up and down. That's much easier. So sometimes most of you see some demos with twos in them later, and you might say, "Oh, he's cheating. He's not going to throw the twos. He's just going to move them up and down in his hand." There you go. That's a pattern. We can try to describe what it is. And that's, uh, that's, that's two. Okay. So there are a couple of little conventions that are sort of thrown in to make things a little bit more juggleable. But they're all supposed to be practical, so that's, that's okay. So I encourage you, uh, if you have some juggling paper, to try to think of a pattern. Uh, and at the end, Mo has volunteered uh, to, to, as a challenge, to try to juggle any pattern that's, that's juggleable that you write so, all right. So, other examples. Okay. We already saw one, which is uh, in sort of the color language. It's blue, 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 blue. So this keeps going back and forth, right? Each one is thrown one to get to the next one. We've seen two, which is Lots of ways to do it. Blue, green, blue, green, blue, green. Each one is thrown two. And you can do it in the hand notation also, which takes a little more space. So I'll let you, let you do that. We've seen three already. Could, could we see four? And you can clearly induct, right? So we'll, we'll see how high low can go. Oh uh, yeah, so which one are you gonna start with? Okay, red, yellow, green, red, yellow, green, blue. And he's gonna throw it so he throws red, yellow, green, blue, red, yellow, green, blue, red, yellow, green, blue, red, yellow, green, blue. And so really what he's doing in terms of this pattern, he just keeps repeating that. But in order to do that, he has to throw each one so that four weeks later it lands, and that means it's gonna land on the same hand. And so if you if you actually analyze what he's doing, can you do four again? Uh, Four breaks up, so red, yellow, green, blue. You can try to analyze, and he can pull his hands completely apart. Or you can just <laughs> one of them. And you really see, you, they, they don't interact at all. There are two totally separate things going on. There's one hand doing two. I mean, they sort of interact with them, but that's, that's not really, that's not really, it's not meditation. Uh, and the other hand is doing two. But they're sort of doing it alternating, right? So it's throw, 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 throw. And so four is actually a lot easier than you think, maybe, because if you can do two in one hand, just put them together and you alternate. So the variation of this where he does things synchronously, where he throws at the same time, 
is sort of also the same thing, but we violate our rule, throwing every other. Okay, hand, 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 hand. So you can describe that as well, but you know, we're not going to. This is four. And it's kind of interesting when you see what happens. So this, this pattern has length four. So you really should think of it as, if you want to think of it as, uh, what, what is the repeating pattern for each ball? It's four, 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 four. And each ball is going to come down, uh, how does this work? Four later. Four beats later. Four beats later. So the red ball is going to come down to the same hand uh, as where the red ball was before. The yellow ball is going to come down in exactly the same position. The green ball is going to come down in exactly the same position. And the blue ball, the same position in the pattern. So there are different ways to analyze what's happening here. Uh, this is another way you can sort of start to see what's happening. You really can see there each hand is doing its own, its own thing. So it's really two to each hand. Okay. Uh, are you ready? Let's your call. Okay, what are the colors? White. White. Green. Green. Blue. 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 Red. Red. Yellow. Yellow. Okay, so those in the front, uh, sorry. White, green, blue, red, yellow, white, green, blue, red, uh, so It's so fast that I can't even count it as it's going on. But uh, Eddie has been kind enough to videotape this talk, and so you can go in slow motion later on and see that I'm really describing the colors in the right way. You just follow the one pattern. You just watched one ball. Dolphins. One ball at a time. It's not, no different from what you did with three. And then if you just watch one hand, you'll see each ball side of it. Not in that order, though, because that's kind of both hands. Right. What you saw in one hand is white, blue, yellow, green, red. Because every other, every other hand. But that's a good way to do it. Hands are already on the pattern. Yeah. Like, all the alternate because it's isolated. Yeah. 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 I see four and five, and you start off with like, in, in particular, in four, you start off with R, uh, red and white as a set on one hand, and the other, like the green drawn together. Can they like alternate hands? So, so if I stick with this pattern, okay, um, whatever order I start with the balls in, they'll keep going in this order. Correct. Okay. Um, what we're heading for here is a way of switching the order. Okay. So make it so that somewhere later on the yellow comes down after the white. That can happen, and that's that's actually what we're headed. Yeah, there are lots of variations on this, but I guess in terms of what you're saying, the different hands. So on, if you just look at his right hand, his right hand is throwing white, blue, yellow, green, red. And if you kept going, you would see white, green, blue, red, yellow, white, blue, that's yellow, yellow, and then be W G B R Y green, red. And so if you just look at what's happening in one hand. So you go through all the colors. Okay, and you can analyze that by just looking at every other thing in the sequence. And you may have been saying something different in the four pattern. Okay, if I watch this, it'll always be these two colors in my right hand only, and these two will stay in my left hand only, and they don't ever go to In five, they actually, each ball will go to both hands. And it's typical of even numbers stay on one side, odd numbers cross. And so where it gets really interesting is that both even and odd numbers in the same. But first, I'd like to induct. Can we keep going? Right. I've done my share of doing it. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I can do three, so just just disclaimer, I can do three. That's it. So by induction, you mean six? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you do one, two, you do three, this one. You don't have to if you don't want to. Like, we're just kind of got to trust them. These are safer balls. Yes, and smaller. So when you see this, uh, we, have, we don't have different colors here, but you should be able to see three balls cycling in one hand and three balls cycling in the other. And, and, I've got color to make that and if you separate these hands enough, you can really see two different patterns. Okay. So all of the even ones uh, are really just sort of half of it in each hand. So that's, that's a, good, it's a good thing to know. Uh, kind of a, a neat trick about it, but you're throwing it, you're throwing it six high each time. So, are you, is, how many you have now? Might as well throw a candle and we're going to do a six. Okay, so six, and then we'll see seven. Now when you see seven, you should see them all crossing back and forth. Okay, they're really beautiful. The two hands are the old over here. Cascade pattern.
variance. Uh, numerically, yeah, maybe. Is there a uh, minus entry for the most? Um, what is that like? I know, I know somebody splashed 12, and I think for balls, I think it's still 12. Which is six in each hand. <laughs> it's just doing six in this hand. <laughs> that's, really, that's really all. Okay. So, so that's kind of cool. It gives us a way of at least analyzing a little bit about you know, what we see when we see someone juggling these things, how we do it for ourselves if we wanted to at home, uh, privately, not being videotaped. Uh, but uh, there are lots of other patterns that one can, one can come up with. So uh, one of the ones that is, I think, the second thing people learn, or at least the second thing I learned when you're doing juggling, is you just have three balls. But instead of having them sort of do that sort of back and forth pattern, like where they're always sort of cascading forward like a little fountain, uh, you have them instead go in a loop. And this is called the, the three ball shower. And I want to try and analyze what the three ball shower looks like. So I'll draw a little, little stick figure of somebody. And maybe it starts with a green ball here. And a blue ball here. I think this is the way you're doing it. The yellow balls are coming down, the blue balls are going over. And the green balls are going up, and that's, that's my artistic rendition of the three ball cascade. Start with yellow, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you definitely yeah, yellow. Yeah, yellow, green, yeah. So you notice know, so when you started that, you sort of cheated, right? You threw yellow and then green to get it going. No, we don't, that's okay. The beginning, we don't have it. If anyone objects, they're welcome to come take over the pattern. So, so we threw the yellow, and then. Uh, it's got to be one, three, one, three, one, three, three. Okay. So let's keep track of how he throws it. So first, he's going to do it really slowly. Okay. Green. I mean, every ball coming out to the left immediately gets thrown by the right. So let's start with green. Okay. So he throws green in the air. Okay. And yellow's already in the air. And so then he throws green in the air, and he has to throw it the other hand. The other hand has a blue in it, so he has to throw the blue. But he throws the blue directly over, so the hand is reached out of the green. Now he has to throw it with this hand. And what's he have in that hand? He has the blue. So he better throw the blue again. But while that happens, the yellow guy is coming down, and he lands in this hand. So this hand is free. The yellow gets thrown over there with this hand. And then in this hand, he has to throw. But what does he have? He has a yellow. So he throws the yellow. Then he has to throw with this hand. What happened in this hand? Well, the green that was following yellow finally came down. And it landed in this hand. He throws it over to this hand. And then he has to throw with this hand, but he only has a green. And then the pattern keeps repeating. Then the blue lands, he throws it across. He has to throw it up. The yellow lands, and so on. So that's the pattern, uh, sort of in terms of the timing of what's thrown for the three ball shower. Let's try to figure out how hard he's throwing these balls. So the first green, how hard does he throw it? How many beats later does it land? The green is going to land, not now, not now, not now, not now, but now, because that's when you get to throw it again. So the green ball has to go one, two, three, four, five beats up in the air. Notice he has to throw it pretty high to do this. When he does it lower, notice the beats are faster. But if he throws it with the same pattern, the same speed as the three ball uh, cascade, then uh, it really is kind of high. So then the blue ball gets thrown, but where does it end up? It ends up in the other hand, the next beat. So this is thrown only one to get to the next hand. And you can, on your juggling video, you can try to annotate this. It's a little bit hard uh, for me on the board here, because five is such a long throw. I start with the green ball here. The green ends up one, two, three, four, five, all the way down there. And then the blue ball gets thrown across a one. And then the blue ball is over here. It gets thrown again. Where does it land? It lands one, two, three, four, five beats later. The blue ball gets sent down there. Five. Okay. And then what happens? Well, now the yellow ball gets thrown. The yellow ball gets thrown so it lands the next beat. So I can throw it again. I throw it one. And then how hard do I throw it? Well, it has to land one, two, three, four, five later. So the yellow ball is here. 
goes across one, and then you throw it by the other one. And so this is kind of a little bit weird. Uh, think about how the timing works. It seems like it's doing something really simple, right? A little teeny, teeny throws, throwing in a circle is really no big deal. I mean, that's probably a better way to describe it. But if you try to describe it in this language, uh, how hard is he doing the throws? Or if he does a five, let's notice the site slot. Okay, he does a five, and then he does a one, and then he does a five. Then he does another one, and you can see this pattern is 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, dot, dot, dot. Which is good because you notice that he's always alternating hands. Right? It has to be alternating hands, it has to be odd numbers. And so you just abbreviate this as 5, 1. Okay? That's our first non trivial juggling pattern. The first thing that sort of looks a little bit different is this is the constant sequence. All right. So uh, we can do a whole bunch more. It's kind of yeah, fun to do it. Do yeah. If you were watching me juggle, you might not think that this was the sequence that I threw. You might think that it went green, blue, yellow, green, blue, yellow, because if you're like me, you're only watching the ones up here. I don't ever see the ones down here. So when I'm watching, I see just the high throws, and I miss the low throws. So if you were watching and, and the colors you saw didn't match this, you probably weren't looking at the low throws. It's really I couldn't, if you'd asked me to say what colors I was throwing, I couldn't have told you. Right. I could see the high ones, but I can't see the low ones. So that's, that's the three-ball shower. So uh, this is supposed to be a mathematics of juggling talk. I mean, there are some numbers here. You could argue whether it's mathematics. Uh, so there, there are some really interesting questions one can ask once one has this notation. So the first thing you can do is you can say, well, you know, can I just make up anything? Can I make up anything kind of juggling? Right? So like, uh, uh, does anybody make that think of a sequence? Maybe we'll do a challenge sequence. Six, yeah. five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so can we juggle everything? Any site swap sequence. Okay, and so Mo is not juggling this pattern, so let's just see why. So let's say we do six, five, four, Three, two, one. Okay. And there's going to be a problem with this pattern. Right? There's going to be a lot of problems. Okay. And the problem is that. Can I, can I demonstrate the problem for you? Yeah. Okay. You ready, Eli? <laughs> it's a really bad problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what the problem is. He'll, he'll explain what, what I mean by that in a second. That's exactly so, what the problem is. So here's the thing <laughs> you start with different balls, right? And they're going to come down sometime. And the thing that's really bad is when two balls come down in the same place at the same time. Because you can't catch them both. Now, if we throw this ball, happens. it's going to come down six beats later. It's going to come down right here. Okay, so look at that place for a second. Okay. Then we throw the next ball, which is different, of course. And that's going to come down five beats later. Right there. Okay, so you can sort of see why I'm going to throw all the balls at you. Because all the balls are coming down at the same moment. Okay. So that's bad. Okay, so that's a good so note. If you have something that looks like n and n minus 1 is forbidden. So I can see something like that. This is a practical consideration if you have really big hands and you can catch a lot of balls at one time. And you know, people talk about that. Maybe Mo can show us some. And things called multiplexing, where this is allowed. Okay, but as a practical matter, for simple juggling, when we say what is juggling, we're going to sort of forbid that. Okay, so you can see he's catching two balls in one hand, and he threw it together. Okay, so you can do it, but for us, it's, it's not going to be allowed. But maybe in the follow up mathematics of juggling, too, we can talk about that. Okay, so. So it takes actually a little bit of work to figure out when a sequence is juggleable. You make up a sequence of numbers, what you need to check is there are no collisions of this kind. Okay. If there are no collisions, uh, then that means that every ball is going to come down at a different time. And by the pigeonhole's principle, that means you'll be throwing a ball at every time. Okay. Okay. Uh, but it's OK if we check 
there are no collisions. And a collision I mean that. So that's our, our first mathematically precise statement. But I know that you're all here for the theorems, right? The juggling is fun, but it really is the theorems that drive you. And so let me sort of tell you the first theorem, and probably the only theorem uh, proved today, but it's an extremely useful theorem. So let's say somebody gives you a pattern. Uh, let's do an example. Uh, do you want to do? Uh, what do you want to do pi or pi? How much time do you have? Let's do five through one. So we'll take the example five through one, and this means repeating. So it's five through one, five through one, five through one, and every number is odd, and so every throw is going to alternate between the hands. And you can see that one really big one, one sort of medium one, and one kind of handoff. That's a completely legitimate pattern, you can see there. And so you can ask, how many walls do you need to juggle the 5 3 1 pattern? Or somebody gives you a pattern that's juggleable, how many walls do you need? You might say, well, I just need three because I have 5 3 1. That's not always true. Exactly. So maybe we'll put over here on the sideboard uh, a challenge example. And if we have time at the end, we can do it. So this is the Roughly speaking, pi juggling sequence that we mentioned earlier, it's not really pi we're using a base 10 representation, we're kind of approximating, but I'll define pi for purposes of this talk to be 3, 1, 4, 1, 6. And there's no decimal point there. Okay, so that's pretty close to pi, and that is a juggleable sequence. So you might say, how many balls do we need to juggle pi? Uh, I know, I know, that's what I'm wondering about. Okay, well, we can take guesses for that. I'll leave that as a challenge. So it turns out that you need less than you might expect. You might say, well, I need five balls to juggle five, because so it's five long. Or you can actually do it with less than five balls. Okay. So I'll tell the theorem, so I'm going to sort of spoil the, the guess. So make your guesses now. Okay. And there I the theorem. So the number of balls is the average of the periodic sequence. Okay, so if you give me a, a side stop sequence, so 31416, you can be the average of this. And the average is equal to 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 5 is 9, 15 divided by the number of digits, we have the number of numbers, which is 5, so that means 3. So this is a 3 ball pattern. And so now Mo can freely juggle what a bit of an integer. That would be bad. <laughs> that would be bad. Right? So as a consequence of this theorem, uh, we know that this is always an integer. But that means justify that theorem. So I'm going to try to take a minute or two, maybe five minutes, to prove this theorem, because the, the proof has interesting juggling consequences. Okay, so it's not just a math theorem, it's a juggling theorem too. So uh, the idea behind the theorem, I'm going to leave that example as something I want to work out to apply the proof to. The idea is that we already understand some of the sequences. So the standard three ball sequence, the, the cascade, we know has three balls. Standard four ball sequence, that's four balls. And, and in fact, we sort of already saw that the side swap notation n, so here's our first fact. The side swap notation n uses n balls. Oh, no one's going to argue with that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take any sequence, we're going to reduce it by a series of, of moves, a series of swaps, to a constant sequence like this. And then you'll know how many balls there are, because if I do something, I have to sort of take the balls away or add the balls. It's a constant, it's invariant of the process. And so you can sort of see what the invariant is on this. And so uh, to do this, we reduce to the constant in case we perform a uh, sequence of what are called site swaps. So let me sort of say what a site swap is. Okay. 
So a site swap uh, takes a, I don't remember, it's, it's decreasing, right? It's decreasing. It's a decreasing pair of numbers. This is the definition of site swap. And so a decreasing pair of numbers in the site swap notation is going to say when certain balls are going to come down. Okay, so I'm going to write it down for this one. So 5, 3, 1, we have red, green, blue, red, green, blue. How do I know I have three? Because the average is, is three. And so this one's going to be thrown. Oh, that's totally wrong, right? That's totally wrong. I'm getting three. The red is going to be thrown, so it comes down one, two, three, four, five later. And the green one is going to become so it throws down, thrown so it comes down three later. So this, this red is five. The green one is going to be three. Three. So it comes down there. And then the blue is going to be thrown one. And that's what's happening. And so what you want to do is you see a decreasing sequence of numbers. First you throw five, and then you throw three. And what we're going to do is instead of having the red end up there and the green end up there, we're going to switch. So we're going to make it so instead of doing that, so after we do a site swap, the red, so red, green, blue, blue, this green, instead of going there, is going to go there. So we'll make the green go extra far. We're going to switch these two. So that's going to be okay because these are not going to collide. When I do that, so if one went, the other's going to go now. Totally fine. This is going to be blue, red, green. Now, how far did the green get thrown? Well, now it's thrown one less. I mean, uh, one more, because it was moved further out. So it gets thrown four. And what happens to the red? Well, it gets thrown one less, because it gets moved further in. Do your decreasing pair have to be consecutive? Mm -hmm. Consecutive, yes. Oh, uh, consecutive. And you can see that 531 is the same thing as 315 or 153, and so you can write it however you want, but you have a decreasing uh, pair of consecutive numbers. Numbers M, N. So here N is decreasing, but N is less than M. So N, N. Uh, and that's when you go, the M is going to go. I some trouble right in here. So this one is going to be bigger than this one. What you're going to do is you're going to uh, move this one over here, this one over here, but this one is now going to be thrown one more because it has to end up uh, where the other one was. It's going to be N plus one. Oh, no. Yes, that's right, N plus one. This one has to be where the other one went, but since I've shifted the positions, this is starting from here. So it has to go to M minus one. Okay, so, uh, yes. so are these like, uh, like alternate? So the N plus one and N minus one means they alternate their hands? Like. So, yeah, so we're going to actually, this process is going to change what hand they end up in also because this is left, right, left, right, left, right. So this, this site swap is going to take something that went to the right hand and take it to the left hand, something that went to the left hand and take it to the right hand. So it's going to be a little bit weird to do. And so if you do a site swap on the pair 5, 3 inside of this, you get to another sequence. But what we've done now is we've taken the biggest one, which is M, and we've made it smaller. So the observation is by doing these swaps, you take the highest throw and you make it shorter. And you can keep doing this uh, until you end up with something that is juggleable, because you start with something that's juggleable, and uh, which is constant. So if you do this to the sequence, you end up with four. Four what? Do you need to invert the order of those of those two? I, I think you could still throw the ball that was formerly M first. And then follow by M plus one. M minus one. I mean I can't tell with your examples because M minus one and M plus one are equal. Yes, that's a good point. I make sure I didn't mess it up. So I do want to swap these. So this one that was five. We go to four, we should throw up one less. 
I just feel like your right side, the two, the two change numbers should be opposite order. This one is the further one. I want to throw it one less. So I should I should decrease. Yeah, I feel like the throw event minus one would come before the throw event plus one. Mm -hmm. Not after, but I think that depends on the actual eyes again. If they're close, then it will actually switch the order. Yeah, if I had a seven four, then I would want, so let's say I had a seven, a seven four, then the seven is going to have seven beats later. I want, and the four is going to end up some, some other time. I want to throw the four from here, so it ends up where the four was. So I'm, so I'm swapping, not where they end up, where they where they start. Okay. There are a couple different ways of doing it, but here I'm going to. So we're going to sort of something from here that's going to end up where the four ends up. Something from here that ends up where the seven ends up. This is going to be one bigger than the small one. It's going to be one smaller than the other one. Okay, I like where they switching where they start. So I'm switching where they where they start. But this is. This is a this is a site swap. And so the observation, a couple of observations here. The first is that this does not change. The number of balls. This side. Just sort of change where they went, but I didn't change the number of balls in the sequence. And uh, so you can keep doing this, and you can keep doing it where if, if you take m to be the biggest number in the sequence, then you can just keep doing that to the biggest number. There are finally many places where it could appear, and you can make the biggest number in the sequence smaller. So this can be used to reduce the largest number. in the sequence. So you can just keep doing this, uh, and the claims that eventually end up with a constant sequence. If you didn't end up with a constant sequence, it takes a little bit of effort to say uh, that that's not allowed. And the reason is because, exactly what we saw before, if you have an n and an n plus, an n plus one and an n, then that's something that looks like this is a little bit bigger than that. You might want to do a site swap to that. But if you did, it wouldn't truly really change anything. It would, just, it would just keep things the same. And so that really wouldn't be so helpful, uh, but that's forbidden. We know, so this is the third fact, and so it's useful to mention, you might be able to reduce something to something that wasn't a constant sequence, uh, but if you, if you did, you can always reduce it to something where things are most one apart. And so the last observation is if you have n, n minus 1 is forbidden. When you put these three things together, this is not really a proof. This is a sketch of a proof. Okay? But you can definitely make this precise. And if you want to talk about it afterwards, if you can. I just don't want to torture you. Okay? It's not really math class. It's math for fun. Uh, so this means that we can reduce. We can always reduce to a constant sequence. Constant or n ball cascade. Without changing the average, right? This doesn't change the average. Okay. It doesn't change the number of balls. Again, it also doesn't change the average, so I guess I should put this for the average. And so that's, I'd say that's probably probably a, a proof. As proofy as I'm going to get. People convinced? Any questions? Uh, I, was, I was thinking of uh, how about, you know, I'm, I'm getting a step ahead, but uh -huh. is there a way to actually keep track, the, track of the periodicity of the, so what I mean is that can the side swap, can, be, can it be recursive in nature? So I keep on printing. Yeah, it's, it's recursive in nature, exactly. So you just do it, and then you sort of look what you get, and you sort of see one time, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again, until, until there's nothing left to do. If they're all the same, then there's no swapping to be done. And that's the way it should work. So let's actually do it in the sequence. This is kind of fun. So now that we have the rule, I'm going to erase this. I'll just sort of write down the site swap sequences. So we have 5, 3. And we swap the 5 and the 3. And so that becomes 4, 4, 1. 
And so you get 4, 4, 1. And now we want to sort of swap again. We say, oh, well, I look at this. It goes from 4 to 4 to 1. I have luck. No decreasing anything. 4, 1. But you can rewrite this as 4, 1, 4. Oh, it's 4 and 1. Oh, yeah. I guess. I get my decreasing and decreasing confused a lot. So thanks for catching me. With 4 and the 1, you can swap those. And that gives you 4, 2, 3. I thought that was in a 1. What do you mean? Well, n minus 1 is never actually following in. n plus 1 oh, is. It, does, oh, you it goes 4, 2. Yeah. And then 2, 3. If this it was 3, 2, that would be bad. Right. 2, 3 is OK. Is that a most in right now? Yes, so Mo is actually demonstrating for us, this is a beautiful thing, he's demonstrating the site swap recursion on the sequence to reduce it to, uh, well, let's just sort of finish. If you take the four and the two, you switch those, and you get three, three, and three, which is the same thing as So that's sort of, in this example, the proof that you have three balls for five through one, but it actually also makes some beautiful things, right? Because you can do a site swap if you're a juggler, right? You can say, okay, I five through one, do you want to do that from the whole thing? So we'll start with 5, 3, 1. That's 5, 3, 1. And now what he's going to do is going to do the site swaps. So he's going to have with 4, 4, 1. See? It's really hard to tell unless you know what you're looking for. So go back to the videotape and check it out. And now he's going to go to 4, 2, 3. It's 4, 4, 1. Now he goes to 4, 2, 3. The 2 he's holding. Okay, number 2 doesn't. He does some juggling. Twice in a row with the same hand. Juggling trick, because that's because he threw the two up and down with the other hand. Okay. And then he can go to 3-3-3, three, 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 which is the standard. Okay. So, I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> All right. So in the last five minutes, uh, I want to sort of say how this is useful for you. Okay. Let's say you're sitting at home. You're like, I can only juggle three. Man, I wish I could juggle something else. It's really awful. There's no one to teach me. I wish I had some like cool, interesting pattern I could do. Uh, you can unswap as well. Okay? And so this theorem was used to prove that any pattern can be reduced to the constant sequence. But that means that if you, if you can do any number of balls, let's say three balls, and you're like, oh, I can do three balls really well. What can I do with three balls? You can start with three. You can unswap. You can pick wherever you want to unswap, and you can build up to three, one, four, one, six. So I'll leave it as a challenge for you to work out how this reduces through a series of things to three. But let's just sort of for fun try to make a sequence for ourselves. Okay? So if we want to discover some interesting three ball sequence. Okay? If you want to do four balls, you can start with four. It's going to add a bit to you, but I, I'm kind of afraid of four. So I'll start with three. So uh, you have to decide, when you take three, how long you want your sequence to be. And so any, any suggestions? This is, this is totally creative freedom here. Seven. Seven. Let's make it seven long. Okay. So we write down seven threes. Four, five, six, seven. And now I want to unswap some of the threes. Okay. I think it's going to be going now. Mo's afraid. He can see what's coming. Okay. And so we can take one of the three threes. Now what we did before is we took it was a decreasing uh, sequence. And so we took this one, we took this one and swapped it, we could make it one bigger, we can make that one smaller. So we could take that sequence and make it three, three, four, two, three, three, three. That is a non-obvious, completely legitimate juggling sequence. Okay, let's do it again. Any, any favorite pairs here? So the pairs have to be decreasing? The pairs have to be uh, not increasing. Not increasing. Not increasing. So that's a good point. So we should look for non-increasing procedures. Which one? Non-decreasing now? Because you're trying to make it harder to get out. There's no one changing it before, too. Well, this one was, this one was, oh, this one was decreasing. So I want non-decreasing. Thank you. Non-decreasing. Okay. I don't like that you have so far to do that. All right, where's another non-decreasing pair? Okay, we can't do the 4-2, but everything else is thrown in. 3-4? Three, four. The 3-4, four, that can get sent to 
three, five, two, two, three, three, three. Well, I keep forgetting that it's good that you're not actually bothering to toss the two up. Another completely legitimate sequence, but you'll notice that the twos here, I mean, they're fine, but they're just not that beautiful. So you might say, well, on aesthetic constraints, I, I don't like to see this very much. What can we do to sort of mix it up? Let me give you a hint how ugly, how ugly that is. You see the twos? Five, three, two, two, three, three, three. How about swap the two, three that's sort of in the middle and make it four, one? This two, three? Yeah. Okay. So you can take this, you can make it a three, five, two, four, one, three, three.